This year I've been driving my Mini with a host of 3D prints under the bonnet doing some pretty important jobs. Now after a season of competitive motorsport it's probably about time we had a look at what we've done, how well it's got on and give you guys all of the details. Welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less, and go faster. So this year, we've been competing in the Mini with a load of 3D prints under the bonnet. And that's specifically the induction manifold, the fuel injection pump holder, throttle cable, bracket, and velocity stacks. So what we're gonna do in this video is take you through each one of those designs and the things to watch out for, the filaments and materials that we've used, and also the printer that we printed it on. But before we get into it, if you've got 3D prints under the bonnet of your car, or it's something that you fancy doing, please drop a note in the comments below. This video isn't the ultimate guide, and there's plenty of guys out there doing some really good stuff. So if you've got some extra knowledge or some different opinions, please put it in the comments. Right then, that's enough of that. Let's get into the detail. I used to run carbs on the Mini, but when I changed the individual throttle bodies, I needed a different fuel pump to hit the higher fuel pressures that injection needs. So I bought one of these, a generic Bosch 048 style motorsport fuel pump that are pretty much everywhere. But then I needed somewhere to mount it, so I could just cable tie it to a decent looking bracket. But you know, when you've got a 3D printer, every problem looks like it will be solved with a 3D print. So this is basically just a clamp. You put the injection pump in, you've got a small amount of closed cell foam around it, and then you tighten it up and the bolts go all the way through and mount it to the plate behind. Not that complicated. However, first off, I printed it in the orientation you would expect, kind of the, the easiest way to print it, if I'm honest. But that gave me a problem because it cracked along the layer lines as soon as I tightened it up. So to fix this, I rotated the model when I printed it 90 degrees. Now that meant the clamping force for the pump runs through X and Y directions as it's printed. And this makes the whole part so much stronger. Since then, I haven't had any issues. So this was a quick little print. It was made in the final couple of days before an event, which are usually my most productive days. And it was there to replace the standard bracket, which was for a dual cable setup, which was standard on the Fireblade. It's got a bit of adjustment for the throttle cable and it's got an auxiliary throttle return spring that I need for the regulations. And it just slots onto the top of the cut down original bracket. Now this was meant to be, as I said, temporary but it really has done a fantastic job. So it's another case of there is nothing as permanent as a temporary fix that works. So I covered the velocity sacks in some detail and I'll put a link kind of up here and down in the description to that video. So what I do have to say is for this particular job, it really shows the power of 3D printing because I needed a very specific length and a very specific attachment to the individual throttle body. So I modeled it and then I simulated it in CFD software and then I printed it and then I fitted it to the car. So if anything was wrong or I want to change the length to play with the pulse tuning, I'll just redesign it and reprint it and it's just there, the power is at your fingertips. So that's really exciting, and it just shows the power of 3D printing when it comes to kind of Clubman Amateur Motorsport. So far, all the prints we've shown you have been made using ASA, which is Acronitrile Styrene Acrylate. And so far, I've only really used Apollo X from Form Futura, because quite honestly, it's a great filament. So why am I going to go out and spend you know, my money on something else that might not be as good? I know it does the job, so I'm just sticking with that. So if you guys have got experiences of any other ASAs, then please put them down in the comments, because 
I'd love some recommendations just in case I can't get hold of Apollo X in the future. ASA as a filament is very similar to ABS, but it does have a few little advantages over ABS. One, it's got UV resistance, which makes it far more suitable for prints that are outside or are gonna be seen in the sun. Secondly, ASA is very easy to print. It just doesn't warp. It doesn't give you any clogging issues. It's like ABS, but easier. I print it about 250, 255 degrees on the nozzle, 85 degrees on the bed, and I use my PEI flex plate and it just sticks beautifully and pops off without a problem once it's cooled. I use ASA a lot in the engine bay because it's got decent temperature resistance up to about 85, 90 degrees, but it's not too expensive. The Apollo X comes in around 20 to 30 pounds for 750 grams, depending on where you get it, which makes it cheap enough that you're not gonna cry if a print goes wrong or if a part doesn't fit. So on the whole, I highly recommend Apollo X. If you've had problems printing ABS or you've not tried it so far, do it. Go out and get some, you will not regret it. For the more demanding applications, and that's pretty much anything bolted to the engine, I use carbon fiber nylon. The brand I've used the most of is Sane Smart, and that's really because it's been the most easy to get hold of. It's available on Amazon in the UK, so I just press the button and it arrives the next day. It's not too expensive at about 50 to 60 pounds a kilo, but still compared to your PLAs and your ABSs, that's eye-wateringly expensive. So you really only wanna use it once you know you've got your design completely dialed in. I'm quite sure there are better carbon fiber nylons out there, such as the Essentium High Temperature Nylon and the Nylon X from Matter Hackers, but these are harder to get hold of and they're very much more expensive when, by the time they get to the UK. So I will try them in the future, but right now, this good old stuff from Sane Smart is doing the job. So this is a tough filament. It's strong and durable and still relatively flexible. So I tried to actually anneal it to see if I get to higher temperature resistance. Well, as it goes pretty much out of the box and off the build plate, it was good for about 175 degrees. So I did a little video on that as well. So uh, <laughs> link up in the top corner. So this filament really wants to be printed quite hot. So I took my printer about as close to the limit as I was willing, so 255 degrees. And I used a glass surface with the glue stick on there. And that really printed very nicely. So if you're interested in that, I did a video uh, spotting a theme of using my Ender 3 and printing with the carbon fiber nylon. Link up there. And I would say in that video, there are a lot of great tips in the comments. So please scroll down, have a look at what the hive mind can tell you. Do I use a fancy, expensive 3D printer? <laughs> well, if you've watched the channel enough, you'll already know the answer to that is absolutely not. So it's an Ender 3 Pro with some very light mods. So I went through the mods on the video I mentioned earlier about printing carbon fiber nylon. And the only thing I've really changed since then has been adding the PEI build plate. And that's really the best platform for ASA or ABS that I've come across. Now I'll put a list of all the mods I've made to this machine down here, but Really, most of them are absolutely standard Ender 3 mods, with the all-metal hot end being the only one that's slightly out of the ordinary. And to be honest, it's a bit disappointing still. Um, I still struggle to print PLA unless I've just rebuilt the hot end. So I wouldn't recommend going cheap on the hot end. I would suggest buying a genuine article, which is exactly what I've now done. So this is a genuine V6 from E3D and it's very well packaged as you can see and I'll be adding this to my printer along with a couple of other mods to try and make it more flexible. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I'll do a comparison video to the knockoff hot end and a genuine all metal hot end. However, I would wholeheartedly advise people to go out and get an Ender 3. It is 
a great introduction to 3D printing and I know more about the machine and the art and the process because I've had to do some changes and find some faults and fix things than I would have done if something had just worked out of the box. So far, all the prints I've shown you've been working towards one goal, and that was fitting individual throttle bodies to the engine. And now it's time to talk about the most important print of all, the inlet manifold for the ITBs. So I did a whole series of videos on fitting ITBs to a car, and I'll put a link kind of up here to the playlist. But I didn't talk about the induction manifold because really, it was a little bit still experimental. And, but now I've had a whole season of running on it, I'm a lot happier to show you guys what I've done, what's worked, and where there's still some room for improvement. So I use carbon fiber nylon as the material for the manifold, and it stood up really well. Auto testing can be a difficult discipline because you've got high engine speeds, low car speeds, which means the engine can get very hot. You've got a lot of jerky changes of direction, and the manifold hasn't struggled with this at all. So I took this picture just after a test had finished and you can see it's registering 92 and a half degrees centigrade on the head and the manifold's just eating it up. So here are some key points to watch out for if you're thinking about printing yourself a manifold. The number one challenge here are the fasteners. So it's very easy to develop huge clamping loads, squeezing forces underneath a nut or a bolt and that can cause especially with the material we use for 3d printing and with a bit of heat the material to kind of creep away from that area where it's under great stress that causes the nuts to be to come loose and you can either get a, a leak or you could have the nut fall off altogether so there's two solutions to this number one is making sure you've got solid material underneath the nut head. So to get this without having 100% infill, I made sure to set the walls on my slicer to eight. That meant that everywhere the nut was pushing down, I had solid material underneath. So the second trick is to use locking fasteners. So I use these nylock nuts, which means that I don't have to crank on a load of tension in the fastener so that the nut doesn't come loose. It actively stays there. So I only need to tighten it a little bit and develop enough clamping to seal it without going overboard and putting undue stress on the material. If you don't have nylocks, alternatively, you can just rattle a second nut on and then lock them off against each other. So these two measures worked for me, but I was fully prepared if they didn't to have to put some metal inserts or create some metal top hats. That means I could really tighten those fasteners down properly. So something to bear in mind, it's gonna depend on your inlet manifold, how many fasteners you've got and how far apart they are. So the whole purpose of fastening it to the engine is to get the inlet manifold to seal against the head. Now. I had the option to use one of these fabric style inlet manifolds, but what you find often with 3D prints, as you tighten them down, they can tend to warp. So what I used instead were O-rings. These allow for a little bit of variation between the head and the inlet manifold and don't require everything to be a perfectly flat surface. So far, they're doing the job perfectly well for me. So you need to understand your engine. So the Vauxhall engine I was using has this port here going into the original inlet manifold. So that puts hot coolant straight through the manifold and to the heater matrix. Now I didn't need that, so I just blocked it over, but with the heat and pressure coming from the coolant, it just started to weep ever so very slightly. So I made up a metal plate and fitted it over the top, which solved all of the issues. But it's just something to bear in mind for your designs. So I've already said that carbon fiber nylon is strong, and it is, but you can't expect it to behave in the same way that aluminum or another metal does. Therefore, you need to think about the design. So one of the concerns I had was all the weight of the individual throttle bodies cantilevered off the head of a vibrating engine. 
that would result in a lot of stress being concentrated at the top of the runners. So to combat that, I fitted these braces, which ties the individual throttle bodies to the top of the cam cover. So that stops any movement between the individual throttle bodies and the head. And that means that the manifold is under far less stress. So had I not put in the braces, I probably would have put in very large gussets between the runners and the flange. Even then, I don't think this would have lasted very long. So you need to take into account with your designs that these things are 3D printed and they're not made of metal. So in case you're worried about the fuel resistance of carbon fibre nylon, I did a little experiment. So you can see I got two pieces of scrap carbon fibre nylon from a failed print and left one sitting in petrol for six months and the other one sat on top. And apart from one being well, a little bit wet and smelly, they both feel exactly the same. There's no deterioration from the test print. So I don't think that's a problem at all. So if you're still watching now, please hit the like button. It really does help. If you're not already, please subscribe uh, to get more videos like this. There's plenty of more content coming. And if you really would like to support the channel more directly, then there is a Patreon page. It's fairly new. I'm just developing it. So this comes with all the normal perks of early access and a Discord server for everyone to talk. But it also has a series of videos of director's commentary where I talk around the videos in a bit more detail and put in a bit of the stuff that I had to take away to make it suitable for, for YouTube. So if you're interested in that little bit more detail, then have a look there, some good stuff. Right then, thank you very much for watching, guys. Stick around, there's going to be more content coming. And until then, catch you later.